What is up guys, Zach here from the Chaos Galaxy and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a good Chaos Galaxy deck. I had a request for this in a comment section for one of my most recent videos. I think it's a really good idea to just give you an insight into the game, almost sort of teach you to play and just get battles that you're having more exciting, more fast paced and obviously help you win. Um, so I'll go into this video assuming that you know the rules for Chaos Galaxy TCG. If you don't know the rules, you won't really know what I'm talking about, so I'll leave a link in the description below to the rulings videos, and um, I'll assume that everyone watching knows how to play the game and a bit about the cards in the game. So, so first off, to build a good Chaos Galaxy deck, there are five different types of cards which can be split up into two categories, one which is played in creature zones and one type of cards which are played in resource zones. Now. In my opinion, the best galaxy has roughly a 50-50 split of these cards. So there is a minimum of 34 cards in a Chaos Galaxy deck. I'd recommend about 17 to 20 of them are creature cards, and the other 17, and maybe a bit less, are resource activator and attachment cards. Now, I wouldn't recommend having more than one combiner creature in a galaxy. Although they're powerful, they can make they can make for pretty dead draws sometimes and be quite inconsistent, unless your whole strategy is to do with combiner creatures. I also wouldn't recommend having too many permanent resource cards in your galaxy either, because although these seem to have very powerful abilities that can last the whole game, they take up one of your resource zones for perhaps the entirety of a game. So I probably wouldn't recommend having more than three or four of these in a galaxy. Unless, again, your whole strategy revolves around permanent resource cards. So I'll start with the creatures that you should use in a galaxy. So the average amount of stars for a creature is four. And this is because you gain four stars at the start of every turn. So if you're using an average of four star creatures in a deck, you'll be playing one creature per turn, which is fair. I'd recommend to kind of work around that average and not have too many really powerful cards in your galaxy. And if you do, try and balance them with weaker cards. And from this, you shouldn't be scared of having too many weak cards in your deck. Although their stats obviously aren't very good, the fact that you can play two or three in a single turn makes them really, really underrated cards that you can utilize very, very well. Um, also with creatures, think about the amount of stars on each card. If, you have, if you're gaining four stars per turn, you kind of want to keep the creatures that you have in a galaxy in multiples of those stars, if you get what I mean. So for example, using a lot of four star creatures and eight star creatures in combination is good. Using like two star and six star creatures are good because you can play a two star creature one turn and then the next turn you'll gain two stars, meaning you've got six to play a six star creature. Uh, it's a bit weird if you're using like three star creatures and seven star creatures because your stars aren't going to add up and you're going to be left with like more stars than you want or just not enough to play your next creature. So think about that when building a galaxy. Little things like that are important because stars kind of control the pace of the game and control what you can do in a turn, especially with creatures. Then with the other cards, resource cards and activator cards, there's a few types of those. There's like, there's what I'd call constructive resource cards, cards that add to your combos and help you build up your plays. Like Telepathic Touch here lets you add combiners to your hands so you can then play more combiners and get some combos off. There's then destructive cards, such as Galaxy Crash, I'm sure most of you know what this does, but this kills cards and stops your opponent's plays. So some cards help your plays and help you win the game, some, some stop your opponent's plays and stop them winning the game. There's other cards, such as Point here, which does neither. I mean, I guess you could say Point helps you win the game, but it doesn't add to you getting control of the game and building up a card advantage. So don't have too many cards like Point in your deck, because then if you open up your hand, you've got like three cards which could get you a few points, but then um, you've used them all and you have nothing really to show for it. Your opponent's just going to attack you whilst you've got nothing and win. So don't use too... Although it's tempting to use these like instant gratification cards such as Point, um, going for like the long game and using combos to win um, is definitely a better option. So after having the kind of ratio of what creatures and resources you need in your deck, you can then figure out an overarching strategy to your deck and then use that knowledge to put the right cards in. So the best kind of overarching strategies in the game are based around the planets in the game. So for example, using Shios, that's a strategy. If you have a lot of Shios creatures that go with the planet Shios and then you've got resource cards to support them, that's a really good place to start. So Shios, so Shios, in case you didn't know, has a very offensive strategy, creatures with high power that kind of go for the win as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, so that's one overall strategy that you can use in your galaxy. 
Then inside these big strategies, you can have smaller strategies, which are little combos like the Meltalon upside down realm combo, which you can use, or if you're using a Gaios deck, like the Gomp rewind wormhole strategy. I wouldn't recommend making a deck or a galaxy that's based around these smaller strategies. Like if you mix a Gomp slash Meltalon deck, it's gonna be weird. You're gonna draw like Gomp with upside down realm, which counteracts each other and it'll just be a bit of an inconsistent mess but having an overall strategy such which mo in most cases will be the use of a planet or a big archetype um, is probably the best way to go in a game and trying not to overcomplicate things by making a deck composed of like three different planets um, it probably won't work um, of course feel free to try things that's what i want this game to be all about trying like combining two um, planets together that might work well so like Sindel and Shios are both quite offensive so maybe making a hybrid deck of them would be really cool to see um, stuff like that but just do things that make sense don't randomly throw loads of random combos into a galaxy together then if you have this overall strategy you should be able to know what its weakness is and how to counteract that weakness so Shios obviously very offensive um, a lot of the Shios creatures in the game have low health ratings so because you know that's part of the strategy, you can then go and put in cards into your galaxy to help with that weakness, like Galactahelm here, which increases creatures' health. So this is gonna be a very useful card in a Shios galaxy, um, whereas not so much if you've just got a weird like mix of cards that don't really work together. Um, if you're looking for an overall strategy or like an archetype, uh, I've got lots of archetype 101 videos um, which go through certain sets of cards, mainly from the starter decks, which tell you about the planets and recommend cards to put in to those strategies. Um, so definitely check those out if you haven't already. On top of this strategy, there's cards called staples, which if you don't know, this is a term from Yu-Gi-Oh! and I think other card games use it. But these are cards that no matter what strategy you're using, they work well in pretty much every deck. Um, a few staples in the game at the time I'm making this video, uh, which is just before set 3 has been released, are Galaxy Crash. Everyone should be using Galaxy Crash, I feel. Although it's limited to one copy, it is the most destructive card in the game, um, so I definitely recommend that. Cards like KO as well, um, a very good one for weakening your opponent. Slush Infestation blocks up your opponent's zones. Cosmic Treasure, a very good draw power card, which is accessible to everyone. Um, a lot of people should be using this to kind of get through, get the key cards to their strategies. Um, Beast of the Black Hole, arguably the most powerful card in the game. On top of that, I definitely recommend using at least one card that can kill permanent resource cards. Bolide Comet and Meteoroid Storm are probably the best two in the game, unless there's like an archetype focused card that does that. Um, because permanent resource cards, obviously you can't attack them, so this, these are going to be your only means of defense against them. I'd recommend having at least one of those. And then, um, if your deck doesn't have a boss monster, if you do have a strong boss monster, then that's amazing. But if not, then Omnius the Planet Abomination, the strongest creature in the game, would be good. And there are definitely, and I know a lot of these cards are quite rare and powerful and hard to get your hands on, but um, there are definitely alternatives to every card here. If you don't have Beast of the Black Hole or Galaxy Crash, you can use something like Charge Blaster, which lets you kill your opponent's creatures. If you don't have an Omnius the Planet Abomination card, powerful, uh, just strong creatures like Viridius the Devourer, which is a common in the latest set, um, is another powerful card. Or like starter deck cards like Shiozian Lava Behemoth, can nearly kill an Omnius itself actually. Um, but yeah, make sure, make sure you've got some kind of variation of all of these cards in your galaxy, I'd say. Um, and you'll definitely be on your way to a strong deck. Of course, on top of these staples, there are staples for individual planets too. Um, because cards based around individual planets aren't accessible to everyone, aren't accessible to every deck, they're generally more powerful. For example, if you're using the planet Sindian, Divine Doom will probably be a staple for you because it because you just kill one Sindian card and get to kill everything of your opponents. Um, a really powerful card, obviously only accessible to Sindian players, so really make the most of these planet-specific cards. So they're kind of the best tips I can give you to make a galaxy. To sum it up, make sure you have a good balance of around 17 to 20 creature cards and around 17 to like 14 resource, activator and attachment cards. Make sure your galaxy has an overarching plan or strategy, whether it's to do with a planet or an archetype. Um, your galaxy will just be lost if you don't have one main focus and aim for the deck. Make sure you use staple cards, they're some of the most widely used cards and powerful cards in the game for a reason, they're good for everyone. 
And probably most importantly is just know what your cards do. Know that when your opponent plays a certain card, you've got the solution to it. Or know that if you draw a combo piece in your hand, you know the other combo piece that you need to get to to make the, com to make the deck work. Um, and that's just done by practice. Again, probably the best way to make a good deck is by practicing. There are some cards that you'll think are really good and then if you use them in practice, they're actually not so good. I know I make this mistake a lot. I'll design a card that I think, oh, this is gonna be so powerful for this planet. I'll make it really rare and like really nice and give it a really nice artwork. And then actually using the card, you realize it's not that good. I make this mistake, so I mean, a lot of you guys are bound to. And there's other cards that I make, oh, I don't think these are very good, so I'll make them a common. Like, Cosmic Treasures are common when I first made it. Didn't think it was that great, but then having seen it be played a lot in the competitive scene, and when I've used it a lot, I've thought, wow, this card's actually brilliant. Um, that was a surprise. So, trial and error and just testing out cards um, is the best way to make yourself a better Chaos Galaxy player and give yourself a better deck. So, yeah, in summary, like I feel a lot of my videos are, practice is the way to get good at stuff. Whether it's designing cards, making videos, or making a Chaos Galaxy deck, practice is the way forward. So, thank you for watching. Let me know, let me know in the comments if you thought this video was helpful. If you think I missed off any points in making a Chaos Galaxy deck, definitely leave them in the comments below. Because um, I'm still learning at this game. As I make the cards, I realise what's good and what works and what doesn't. Um, so your guys' help is just as useful as me making these videos. Um, so yeah, in the comments below, let me know that. Let me know what strategy your deck uses, what your favorite strategy is in the game. If you found any cool combos that I've not discovered yet, um, leave all that sorts of useful stuff in the game for me to see, for other players to see and get better at the game. So that's really exciting to see what you guys will come up with in the comments. But apart from that, let me know if you thought this was helpful. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Head to the link in the description where you can get your hands on some Chaos Galaxy packs and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.